Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFA Chan. Good morning. Um, I am here to talk about today's EPL soccer slate. Um, it starts off at 9 a.m. Eastern time. So it's, it's an early slate, um, but it's, an, it's a very, very interesting slate, in my opinion, because of the Arsenal piece here. Uh, on the slate and then the West Ham on the road are the only only the only favorites on the slate it's a three game slate um, but we don't have Chelsea Man City Liverpool you know anything like that um, Arsenal is the biggest favorite at home and they're playing against the leaky Leeds United on the on the slate so I think a lot of people will flock toward the Arsenal pieces and stacking Arsenal pieces, which I understand for cash and optimal purposes. But for GPP, I would definitely consider fading Arsenal because they have shown some struggles before, even in a good spot like this. So that's the first game. And then Leicester City versus Everton is the second game. Um, it, it's more of a toss up here. I know Leicester City has been struggling, but then Everton... <laughs> is one of the last teams on in this understandings. So, you know, between the two, uh, you know, it's really, it, you know, it's, it's a really a toss up, but I'll, I'll kind of talk about the players that I would, that I really like um, for today's game um, and here in a second. And then the last game on the slate is Norwich city against West Ham. Like I said, West Ham is the slight favorite on the road against Norwich city because Norwich city is one of the bottom tier teams in the EPL. So, so yeah, so let's dive in. So Arsenal versus Leeds United. Um, let's see. Arsenal, like I said, they're, they're at home. So like I said, Arsenal is at home, um, but for Arsenal, it all starts with Bukayo Saka. Um, Saka has been taking most of the set pieces, and he has, uh, you know, good upside um, in the open play. And then after Saka for Arsenal, it, it goes to Gabriele Martinelli on the other side of the uh, on the on the other side of the pitch. So Martinelli sometimes takes set pieces, and sometimes he doesn't. But his uh, open play upside is really good, especially on the side of Rafinha. Um, uh, for leads, I think that's going to be the good spot for Martinelli to uh, expose for against the leads. So we got Saka, Martinelli, and then after that, I think it's all GPP in my opinion. Um, even their fullbacks have not been going up and down as much, like Tav Tavares and Tomiyasu. Um, I know they're going to be projected to start today because of the injuries to the regular fullbacks for Arsenal. And I'm not a huge believer in Tavares or Tamiyasu. So I think that's going to be the um, maybe maybe like a little slight weakness. That's a downgrade um, for Arsenal, in my opinion. And then for like strictly GPP purposes. Yeah, I mean, like you can play Odegaard and Katia, you know, up top, number eight and number 30 for Arsenal um, in the middle. Um, whereas they're, you know, Odegaard likes to he's a chance creator and he likes to um he doesn't like to shoot the ball he doesn't like to cross the ball but you know if the, if you think arsenal will score um there's a good chance that odegaard could get an assist or or a goal even um but odegaard in, in the middle more of a false nine position where he's gonna dictate the pace of the game on the offensive side i think um you know working with martinelli and saka in the middle so I think that can definitely happen. And Katia, I mean, I really liked Lacazette when he used to start for Arsenal, but Katia is not that bad either. Um, so if you think Arsenal will score two, three goals, you know, those two guys are not the worst choices in my opinion. But I will definitely focus on Saka and Martinelli today um, and then maybe play whoever you want for Arsenal to stack with them. And then on the other side of the matchup, <clears throat> Leeds United, yeah, I mean, I would definitely consider playing Rafinha because Arsenal is not like Manchester City or Liverpool where they dominate possession. Um, so Rafinha will do will get plenty of opportunities, in my opinion, um, to score rack up points. I think he may go under own because he's going up against Arsenal. 
Um, people will probably think that Arsenal will dictate the pace of the game, but you know, it is possible. It could just turn out to be an open play, like very open game rather. So where Rafinha can thrive in Leeds definitely has to win this game in my opinion, or at least tie, tie this game because they are on the verge of, um, falling into the relegation zone uh, against Everton here. Everton has 32 points, but they're a game behind. And Everton has a game today uh, and on the, you know, on the slate as well against Leicester City. So Leeds will look at that um, and, and they'll try their best to either tie or win the game here, I think, in my opinion. So Leeds will give 100%. They'll be motivated to play. Um, so Rafinha, I think, is, is, in my opinion, is a good choice today. It will, will probably go on their own because of the matchup. And then after that, it's all strictly GPP, in my opinion. Um, like Jack Harrison is naturally the next choice. Um, and then after that, Daniel James or Rodrigo. So really these guys here up top, but, uh, you know, Rafinha would be the one that I start with. The second game on the slate is Everton versus Leicester City. Um, this in, is an interesting matchup because they're both, both teams have been struggling here um, this season, even though they're well-known teams and they have historically done well. But I just cannot imagine Everton getting relegated. You know, Everton has such been, uh, you know, has been a household name uh, for, for the EPL. And they have so much talent. Um, I mean, with injuries, it's been you know, a bit of struggle, like as you can see here. But um, I just do not see them man, getting relegated, in my opinion, because they're game behind, like I said, on total games played. So if they win or tie, that's going to be put them closer to Leeds or at Burnley. Leeds and Burnley. Burnley has 35 games played, so Everton has two games behind them so i think everton will try their best um so let's go with everton first i think they're a slight favorite at on the, on the road because of this because they have more to play for um but for everton it all starts with demara gray and anthony gordon so i would play either one of them or both of them i, I mean i'll be very in, enticed to play both of them um and then, and then maybe even me, maybe Richarlison. I think this is going to be a sneaky upside uh, fantasy friendly game on the slate, in my opinion. I mean, people may think Leeds have a leaky defense, and they do, but Arsenal has not been the best offensively. Um, so I think Everton and Leicester City can definitely have, it definitely has the upside um, to be fantasy friendly, in my opinion. So Gray, Gordon, and then Richardson. And then after that, GPP strictly. Um, Coleman and Michael Michaelenko, Michaelenko, I think they are a good play today as well. Um, but then on the Leicester City side, it all starts with Dewsbury Hall, in my opinion, unless James Madison's starting. I don't think he is. Um, Dewsbury Hall, Tielemans. That's probably it. Dewsbury Hall, Tielemans, and then Barnes for GPP, Inacho for GPP, Perez for GPP. He might be cheap today uh, for what he is, for what his role is today. Perez, and then the fullbacks, I'm not that interested. So Dewsbury, Tielemans, and then Barnes, Inacho, or Perez there. So, but I think Everton is going to um, be motivated to play today, like I said. And the third and the last matchup of the slate is Norwich City against West Ham United. As I mentioned, Norwich City is at the bottom of the standings um, along with Watford. So they are more than likely going to lose this game. Um, and West Ham really is motivated to win this game because against Man United, they are two games behind, but they are six only six points behind. So if they win this 55, and then if they, if they win the next game, then they could be caught up to Man United for this sixth spot Europa League uh, spot there. So, uh, yeah, I think West Ham is going to try very hard, but they're on the road. Um, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, but for West Ham, it all starts with Jared Bowen. Jared Bowen, and then after that, it's Lanzini and then Ben... Eh, 
And then it's Ben Rama, Lanzini. And then for GPP, Antonio um, Cresswell, in my opinion. So I will start. So I will start with Bowen, and then Ben Rama, Lanzini, and then after that, probably tier below that is Antonio and Cresswell, in my opinion. I think prioritization standpoint. And then Norwich City is. I mean, like I said, I think West Ham is going to dictate the pace of the game, and they're going to dominate possession. I think. But for Norwich City, if you think they'll score, yeah, I mean, Rashika is probably a natural choice and then Puki. But those two are probably the only ones that I'll be interested in for Norwich City where I, you know, am fully expecting them to struggle today. So, yeah, West Ham, I think they'll dominate possession. Um, so I would focus on the, 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 the um, attacking midfielder positions. And then for Everton Leicester City, I think both teams are playable. Um, but for I like Everton pieces a lot more because of the, the motivation that they're playing with today with Gray and Gordon. And then Arsenal, yeah, I mean, it starts with Saka and Martinelli. Um, so I think we have we have a lot of um, fantasy friendly games today. So I think it's going to they're all going to be high scoring matches. So like if I were uh, straight up better, I would probably bet that like more than one goal will be scored in each game or something like that. I think that should give you a good parlay uh, odds, I think, in my opinion. So, yeah, anyway, that's where I'm at. If you guys have any questions, um, but once the starters come out, starter confirmation comes out at like 8 a.m. here in about an hour, I will share some notes if there is any significant um, changes that that's made um, to e for each team. But yeah, if you want to chat soccer or if you want to um, just talk about um, soccer DFS, let me know. I'll, I can be reachable. I can be reached on, uh, you know, to Twitter, Discord, um, YouTube, you name it, at DFS Chan. So yeah, good luck, everybody, and have a good one. Thanks for watching.